Hello friends! All this video is placed on power battery channel and years ago my dream was to build big powerful battery but right now I've got a device which is really necessary in order to build any high quality battery. In order to build something like this we need to know the capacities of all the batteries and for these needs we should use the corresponding devices. You can see the video review of ZB2L3 also on my channel. But unfortunately only the capacity tester is not sufficient in order to build a high quality battery. As besides the capacity we should know the internal resistance or internal impedance of each accumulator of the battery. For this purpose we should use the corresponding device. Here it is. On one side it's a very simple device, but on the other side it's a very necessary one, because it can measure the internal impedance precisely. Together with this device you can purchase different types of probes, but for my needs I've got the following one. There are lots of rumors on the internet that the probe is very weak in order to withstand high currents with the help of which this device would measure the internal impedance. But in this case high current is not an issue at all. Because with this probe the device sends the frequency of 1 kHz, receives it at the same time and this is the only way how this device calculates the internal impedance of a battery. Besides the internal impedance it also measures the voltage. That's why each probe is 2-in-1. So one probe is designed for internal impedance and another one in order to measure the voltage. We have only four buttons on the front panel and here we have two USB sockets. Micro USB is designed for charging and this is for the probes. Here we see the name of the device YR1030+, the voltage range from 0 to 28 volts and impedance range from 0.01 milliohms up to 200 ohms. The power supply used for charging of this device should provide 5 volts and more than 500 milliamps. This version is in Chinese, but anyway let's turn this device on and see its menu. Here we have ohms, here volts, well, these are modes, impedance and voltage, and we can change these modes with the help of these two buttons. 20 milliohms, 200 milliohms, 2 ohms, 20 ohms, 200 ohms. Auto. Also here, voltage 2 volts, 20 volts, 28 volts, auto. Also here we have the hold button and it will freeze the indication. If you are not satisfied with the indication after getting of this device, you can calibrate it. So you should connect the plus probe to the minus probe and press zero button. This way. And here the accuracy is 2.7 milliohms. Now I have zero. Now let's check the menu. The first line is normal mode and it's necessary to go back to the main screen. Second line sorting mode and probably you can sort the data but I don't use this function. Third line number three 
Well, this is backlight mode. First function is the luminance, or the second function is mode, and the third function is delay. In order to change the luminance, we should press this button. Let it be 10. So it wasn't saved. This was save. Let's go back. Let it be 85 again. Save. Well, this menu mode has three functions. The first is on, the second is off, and the third is trigger. Now we have trigger, so in case of measurement, if a certain impedance is achieved, the device turns on the backlight. For example, so the impedance is 89 milliohms and the backlight is on. Here we have off and on. And this is the delay, 10 seconds. Also, it can be changed. So from one second to one minute. Number four. Well, this is auto off mode. It's either on or off. And the device will turn off in 30 minutes. And this is power saving mode. off and on. In case of low battery it will turn off in 10 minutes. Number 5. Well, this is grading set and in case of need you can make changes here. Number 6. In English menu this is grading count and here you can select yes or no. Number seven. Well, this function is designed for calibration. You can change both the internal impedance and voltage. Well, this is factory settings reset. No, yes. And the last one, number nine. Well, this is the charging current of the internal battery, either 200 milliamps or 400. Let it be 200. Let's measure the internal impedance of the batteries of some well-known brands. Well, this is Sony. Once again. eighty-eight milliohms. And this is Samsung ICR fifty five, not bad. And this is Senio four three, the better result. This is LG. All of them are from the laptop batteries, 64, this is the Panasonic, forty-two. Now let's measure the Chinese brands. Uh, this is high current battery designed for drills or drill drivers and its internal impedance should be very low. 16 milliohms.
not bad. Uh, this is a Lishan battery, also Chinese brand, and according to the manufacturer's information, it's 10C. So it's also the high current battery. The internal impedance is less than 16 milliohms. And now I'll show you the original Samsung INR high current battery and the fake one. And we will see the difference of the internal impedances. Well, this is the original battery. And uh, this is the fake one. Uh, original battery. And the fake battery. Visually they are almost the same but the inscription here is shorter, uh, the dots are thicker, the plastic is also thicker, and here we can see uh, this line. You can see it. It's very thick. And here we have almost no lines. But let's see the main difference. Uh, this is the original one and its internal impedance amounts to approximately 12 milliohms. Let's measure it. Now let's measure the impedance of the fake battery. Eighteen milliohms. Also, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that sometimes you have the batteries of the same manufacturer or the same capacity, but somehow a device stops working or works improperly with the set of these batteries. So here is the case from my practice. Here we have Sony batteries. They were packed in one box. They have almost the same capacities, but something is wrong with them. Let's measure the internal impedance. 31. Forty-two, thirty-one, six hundred thirty-nine milliohms. So, because of this battery, this pack doesn't work properly. Let's check another set of batteries. Also Sony, but not twenty-five hundred milliamp hours. Well, these are 2700 milliamp hours. Hundred forty seven, hundred fifty two, fifty six, sixty three. So well, these two ones are older and these two ones younger. Energizer nineteen forty four fifty three twenty five. All the batteries are approximately one year old. Aniloop Pro. The capacity is 2400 milliamp hours. Twenty two, twenty one. And finally, let's check the frequency of this device and its waveform. Nine nine seven nine nine eight. Sometimes nine nine nine. So we can say that the frequency is really one kilohertz and the waveform is square. Also, please pay attention to the fact that the oscilloscope probes are connected directly to the impedance meter probes. Otherwise, we will have distorted signal like this.
And also an extremely important note. If you want to turn the device off, you need a long press. Oh, this is no. And this is yes. Hope this video was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Wish you good luck.